It would almost be incomprehensible for me to go back to quilting and sewing without using rotary cutters, rulers, and mats. But it also can be difficult to remind myself to give my rotary cutters some TLC to prolong the life of the blades. Here's how I care for my cutting blades to start sharp and stay sharp. There are three ways that you can sharpen the blades. First of all, the orbital blade sharpener. It's a manual sharpening mechanism that's quite clever, very compact. The blade fits between these two areas. There, there is a sharpening stone, there's a coarse grade, and then the fine grade is stored underneath. First you're going to do the coarse and then the fine grade sto stone. There are two washer, one for a 60 millimeter and the other for a 45 millimeter blade. I've taken apart one of the blades, as you can see here, and use a magnet to position the blade right into the orbital blade sharpener. Put the washer down, and before covering it up, use some oil, about four to six drops around the edges, at the very edges, because that's the area, of course, that's going to be sharpened. And then put the top down and cover it up. And you'll have to test to see how tight to make the screw at the top because you want the contact with that sharpening stone. And you can hear it kind of grind. That's, that means it's working about 20 revolutions around. And then you get the idea. You're going to flip it over and do the other side. Before flipping it, I like to use cloth to wipe off the grindings. It's easier to do it when it's in the stone, excuse me, in the sharpener. Flip it around, there you go, and then add again some oil, four, six, four to six little drops, little, very little drops, and then put on the washer and repeat. Now I have the coarse stone in the sharpener right now. After you've sharpened with the coarse, then you can repeat with the fine stone to get a very sharp blade. So you can see how easy that is. Now if you do a lot of quilting and sewing with a rotary cutter, you may want to use the True Cut Power Sharpener. This is very fast. It can sharpen not only the 60 and 45 millimeters, but also a 28 millimeter blade. Inside the motorized sharpener, there are three different concentric circles that can hold the different sizes. There's a drop of oil that goes on the, on the sharpening stone, which is right where I'm putting the drop of oil. Now this moved out of place, so let me move it back. And not too hard. About 30 seconds, which I'm only going to do a few of those seconds. Then flip it around. Now it does come with the tweezers. I just happen to prefer the little magnets. And then there you go. And when you take it out, you can use this little lever to help lift the blade and then wipe off the grindings. Sometimes midstream, you need to do some sharpening. And you, without taking the blade out of your cutter, you can do it right at your cutting table. Now this is real life sewing and cutting here. This mat is what we have in our sewing studio, unfortunately. This is a fabric that we actually cut with a blade this morning in our studio and we have perforated fabrics and this wasn't intentional. This is the way the blade was so it certainly needed to be sharpened probably before rather than just during the process. So you, if you want to sharpen during the process you can use the True Cut Rotary Sharpener. This works with the 45 and the 60 millimeter sharpener, uh, cutters, excuse me. Just like you're cutting fabric for a 45 millimeter rotary cutter, hold the blade at a 45 degree angle and cut about 20 times. And I'm just going to cut a few. Turn it 180 degrees. Go at it again. And you can now get the sharpening stone at the other side. And again, another 20 times on both sides. And a really quick sharp. Now if you're working with a 60 millimeter, then hold the blade at 30 degrees, so down a little bit further, and do the same process. This is a, a fun one to work with. 
So we have now three ways to sharpen the blade. Sometimes your mat needs some TLC as well. If you have rough spots on your mat or you have a lot of fibers on your mat, it's going to dull your blade. So here is the mat that's very well used in our sewing studio and where I have nicks, you can't get rid of them all, but with the mat smoother, by smoothing it in sideways, up and down motion, you can fine tune or hone down some of those grooves that sometimes cut from repetitive cutting or you get from repetitive cutting. But then also if you're cutting fleece or heavier fabrics, the fibers embed into the mat. Then you can use a mat cleaner and like you're erasing something from a piece of paper, you can pull up those fibers and you can see some of the fibers that are there. By having a clean mat, a smooth mat, you're also going to prolong the life of your blade. Nancy's Notions offers a full selection of sewing notions to test out your new sewing or quilting skills. Order your supplies today.